Hi, I'm Dr. Sakib Mansoor, and uh, today I will uh, talk uh, in my lecture, veins in the root of neck. And uh, you see there are two large veins terminates in the root of the neck. They are the external jugular vein and the anterior jugular vein. And uh, these two external jugular vein drains uh, mostly blood from scalp and face. You go back to my lecture with you on the anatomy of scalp. And then and the anatomy of face, then you will come to know that how this external jugular vein is formed. You recall uh, even my lecture with you on uh, parotid gland anatomy. There I showed you again uh, that the external jugular vein, how it is formed, and uh, by the formation of the, with the retromandibular vein, which was formed in the substance of the parotid gland. Retromandibular vein, which was going into an anterior vein and a posterior vein, emerging at the lower angle of the parotid gland, if you recall. And uh, they're uh, by union uh, with other veins, just forming the an external jugular vein, right? So this was from the drainage from the scalp. And uh, you could see this area, like, uh, uh, you can see like this. This could be the area of the, you could see scalp area, right? This is so scalp, you remember from up till this uh, superior knuckle line and up till this, not visible here, the supra orbital area right supra orbital margin and going to the um, this uh, superior knuckle line at the occipital bone and then this is the area uh, which is up till the zygomatic arch above that this is the area of the scalp and also this temporal region this over here and then you see uh, a temporal fossa and also this uh, below area uh, the zygomatic arch you can consider as intra temporal fossa so these are the anatomical landmarks which we already told you uh, enough. This is a lecture, my lecture with you on temporal force, a separate lecture. And then the, also this is mention of all these areas. Uh, so it's the, like uh, I told you, uh, the lecture on uh, anatomy of the scalp, if you recall, and then the uh, normal lateralis lecture. Uh, this, uh, in, uh, this contains all these things with the mention of this temporal fossa and this zygomatic arch and various structures. So this is the area where, so anterior jugular vein then, this is external jugular vein and on the anterior jugular vein. And uh, this is the smallest of the jugular veins. These two veins over here, external jugular vein and the anterior jugular veins. And the anterior jugular vein typically arises near the higher bone from the confluence of the superficial submandibular veins. You can see uh, this picture, this is the internal Tubular vein, right? So this is the what? This is the internal jugular vein, and uh, this you could see this is the anterior jugular vein. So I've already told you this is the anterior jugular vein. In the next uh, very soon, next uh, two slides, couple of minutes for five minutes, I tell you what is this anterior jugular vein and what is us um, happening in with it in the. Uh, jugular venous arch was just formed. So interior jugular vein, how they contribute to the formation of the jugular venous arch in the suprasternal notch. So you identify this interior jugular vein, which are formed during the, uh, our this uh, near to the high eyed bone. And uh, this is the point about uh, this uh, veins over here. <coughs> so, then uh, moving on, and I uh, focus on to this point. You could, there is a, in the skull, my lecture with you on um, the dural venous sinuses, dural venous sinuses. At this point, you know, the dural venous sinuses, this is, there is a sigmoid sinus, sinus shaped, S shaped, and it uh, continues below from this uh, uniform, the uh, superior bulb of the internal jugular vein. So it continues as the internal tubular vein so you know and one point i mentioned you again and again this is you can recall another lecture of me with you which was lecture on the fascia cola deep cervical fascia which tells you that this internal jugular vein throughout its course from here uh, uh, as it's from the termination of the sigmoid sinus up till this uh, point which would be uniting with the subclavian vein, I will tell you in uh, shortly in 
detail where it becomes uh, right brachiocephalic vein here and the left brachiocephalic vein here. So up till that, throughout its course, it is uh, enveloped and closed in the carotid sheath. So this is the point. The carotid sheath also contains beyond uh, and beside this internal jugular vein, it contains the vagus nerve and the carotid system of arteries, like the internal carotid artery mostly. So uh, this is the uh, level that uh, this level where it terminates this internal jugular vein at the level in the body with the vertebra is T1 vertebra. Okay, these are the seven cervical vertebrae with the vertebra prominence. You are here. This is the C7, and this is the T1 vertebra. So this is the termination of the internal jugular vein. This is the landmark. So this all happens to this is you know this is sternum. And this is clavicle. So this joint, you know, this is the sternoclavicular joint, and above this joint, this happens this at the level of the T1, which terminates internal jugular vein by uniting with the uh, brachiocephalic, uh, by uniting with the subclavian vein, forming the brachiocephalic vein. So right. And you see uh, various veins coming into that. You see this, follow this picture, very important. Uh, that is the occipital vein. This is the pharyngeal veins. Then the facial vein and the lingual veins. The various branches of the, um, you know, this uh, external carotid arteries, uh, arteries, branches, the facial artery, lingual artery. These are the veins corresponding to uh, those uh, artists' uh, names. These are the training into this. And this is very important, thyroid vein, superior, middle, and inferior. Superior thyroid vein, middle thyroid vein, superior thyroid vein, middle thyroid vein, and inferior thyroid vein. And in my next lecture with you, which is on uh, thyroid uh, glands, we'll discuss in detail uh, what is the superior, middle, and inferior thyroid vein, their fate, what is the uh, detailed discussion of that, along with, of course, their arterial splay. So today's topic is only on the uh, focused on the uh, venous drainage, veins, veins in the uh, root of the neck. So this is area of, uh, in the root of the neck. This whole area is the neck, and this is vein in the root of the neck. So the most important here is a internal jugular vein with the two veins. I told you this is the external jugular vein, and the other was anterior jugular vein. So showed all already. You see, can see again. This is the anterior jugular vein, right? And you see this external jugular vein, I mentioned over here, this directly drains into the subclavian vein, which does not drain into this internal jugular vein. The external jugular vein drains into this subclavian vein. With, but this is right side, the same, same happens on the left side. This is the layout, right? And uh, so that is the point. And uh, of course, these uh, brachiocephalic veins right and left here unite to form the superior vena cava which ultimately drains into the right atrium of the heart. And uh, the anterior jugular vein descend either in the subcutaneous tissue or the deep to the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia between the anterior median line and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastide. So at the root of the neck, the anterior jugular vein turns laterally posterior to the sternocleidomastide and opens into the termination of the external jugular vein or into the subclavian vein. Superior to the manubrium, the right and the left anterior jugular veins commonly unite across the midline to form the jugular venous arch in the suprasternal space. So that I told you already, uh, various uh, these. Uh, so there we were talking about that and uh, moving on uh, to the next uh, uh, slides and uh, the jugular venous arch was mentioning, so the subclavian vein. So that's, again, you can recall that uh, subclavian vein is beyond the uh, axillary vein, beyond the outer uh, 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 border of the first hip. It continues as the subclavian vein. So it joins with internal jugular veins to form the brachiocephalic vein. This I told you already. Already. So this is the thing, and. Uh, Going back over here, and uh, I repeat this subclavian veins, continuation of the axillary vein begins at the lateral border of the first hip and ends when it unites with the internal jugular vein. The subclavian vein passes over the first rib anterior to the scalene tubercle parallel to the subclavian artery, uh, but it is separated from it by the anterior scalene muscle. It usually has only one named tributary, 
the external lubricant. So I already shown you what is uh, this vein. Yes, you can see again, I can uh, show you. This is external lubricant, vein, and this is the uh, only named tributary, this external lubricant, vein, only named tributary of the subclavian vein. Yes, external lubricant vein draining into the subclavian vein. So that is the point, and uh, then uh, we move on and uh, show you and uh, see this best uh, internal lubricant vein um, and uh, the level and posterior to the medial end of the clavicle. So, so see you check again. This, this is the internal lubricant vein, and this is the subclavian vein and internal lubricant vein, and this is all happening. With, uh, uh, posterior to the medial end of the clavicle. This is clavicle, this is the lateral end, and you see this is here is the medial end. Medial end of the clavicle and the posterior to that anterior internal lugular vein terminates uh, over here. This is the level of the T1 vertebra. You see this, this is the you see C7 vertebra, and this is T1 vertebra, and this is the level over here. And at this point, you know, another I want to show you, this is the venous angle. This is the right venous angle, this is the left venous angle. How they're formed, right? This is the left venous angle, internal lugular vein, unites with the subclavian vein, forms brachiocephalic vein, and this union of internal lugular vein with the subclavian vein is known as venous angle. Where on the left side at this angle drains a thoracic duct, mostly draining the lymph from the major area of the body. And this is right um, um, uh, sided, and this is the right venous angle. Similarly, uh, with the uh, right uh, internal lugular vein and the right subclavian vein unite, form the brachiocephalic vein. This is the right venous angle, and here we have the jugular uh, venous trunk and the right lymphatic vein. There is a thoracic duct on the left side, opening into the venous angle, left venous angle, and this is the right venous angle having the opening of the over this. A right lymphatic duct, some of the area on the right side of the drained into this uh, venous angle, but through the right lymphatic duct. So that's the point. And uh, then there's a few words about this uh, word, uh, as you know, lymphatic and uh, the lymph nodes associated with these areas. You can see this is the scalp I showed you already. And uh, then uh, this is the you know, face, this is the pre auricular region with the parotid gland, parotid lymph nodes, post auricular one, this is the occipital, this is mastoid, occipital, shown you in various lectures of mine in those corresponding areas. This is scalp, uh, this is neck, so these are the, this is external lingual vein, and you can focus on to that, this area, this is the tutorial, this is the thyroid gland, this is larynx, this is the hyoid bone. These are the internal lugular veins. You see, identify various very important lymph nodes. And this is superior deep cervical. This point, this color, light green, superior uh, deep cervical. These are the inferior deep cervical. This chain is very important deep cervical lymph nodes in this area. And that is a uh, pre laryngeal. Sorry, this is the pre laryngeal. This this reddish color pre laryngeal lymph node. Then uh, with the trachea, the paratracheal. This is trachea. This paratracheal and this is the pretracheal lymph node, right? And they drain the various areas over here in this various gland, especially now with this uh, thyroid gland. This is my less, next lecture with you, and uh, then would be a separate, very important lecture with the anatomy of the larynx. So, this is the thing. And then last, we see this slide where this uh, various suprahyoid muscles I told you in my lecture with uh, you on the suprahyoid muscles with the um, a relation with the anterior cervical region to study the anterior triangle of the neck, the suprahyoid muscle. We also study the infrahyoid muscle. So these are the four suprahyoid muscle. Like this is the mylohyoid digastric, right? This is right. So this is the very super muscle, the suprahyoid muscle, and uh, this is the anatomy. This is saint in the jugular vein. Also, this is common carotid artery dividing into the uh, external and internal carotid arteries. So you see, this is as we had focused on uh, this internal jugular. Uh, Vein and this is the four nerves, cranial nerves, four uh, associated with this area relations. And you see the relationship like this, this is posterior belly of the digestic. You identify these relations, you know that. So, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth cranial nerves are associated with that. What are they? The ninth one is it's a glossophrenial nerve. This is yellow color, right? This is the 
uh, related to this uh, this domain, uh, general degree domain, and then the tenth, this is vagus nerve related with that. So see the relations median. So this is the hypoglossal nerve. You can see twelfth is going to the hypoglossal nerve splice the it's a motor nerve supply to the muscle of the tongue, extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the tongue. And this is the uh, spinal accessory nerve here in this color, greenish color. This is you see, you can see this is the spinal accessory nerve. So uh, this is the sum of uh, it. Uh, this uh, and uh, today's focus was of course on this uh, internal jugular vein, which is too important vein, the external jugular vein, and uh, then again uh, last vein was this jugular venous arch formed by the anterior jugular vein merging, uh, which come from the submandibular veins. So this is a uh, hallmark of this. And uh, one word about this: this is. Uh, uh, this is the internal jugular vein. It is responsible for overall from this uh, uh, dural venous sinuses. So go back to my lecture with you on the dural venous sinuses, and they all drain via this in, uh, internal jugular vein and coming through this channel to form the brachiocephalic vein. And by the left and the right brachiocephalic vein is from the superior vena cava, which drain into the right atrium of the heart. So this is the uh, end of the discussion with you uh, in my lecture of. Uh, 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 today with the uh, this uh, veins in the root of the neck and uh, i wish you so uh, good luck to you all of the um, um, students and uh, we will uh, discuss uh, the higher anatomy next so goodbye till then